Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. Today we're going to talk about a problem that plagues all Creality printer owners at one time or another, and that is filament drag. How do you know if you have it? Well, your perfectly printing Ender 3 or CR10 is all of a sudden going to start having under extrusion. It's also going to have stringing issues, and both of these are caused by filament drag. What's going on? Well, with these style hot ends that come with these printers, your Bowden tube doubles as a PTFE liner for the length of the hot end. It actually goes all the way through this hot end right down to the back of the nozzle. That's designed to insulate your filament so it doesn't heat up and expand and cause a clog up in your hot end where it would cause an issue. The problem with this design is if your coupler fails, if it loosens and lets that Bowden tube slip, you're going to create a gap between the back of the nozzle and the front of the Bowden tube. That gap is going to fill with softened or molten plastic, and that's going to cause drag on the filament that you're trying to feed through or retract. That's why retractions don't work as well and you get stringing, and that's why feeding doesn't work as well and you get under extrusion. So how do you fix it? Well, the preventative measure when you build the machine, as I mentioned in my build video for the Ender 3, is to replace that stock coupler. They're crap. Creality makes beautiful machines, but for some reason they put these shitty little couplers in and I hate them because they fail after a month or two in all cases. Um, get a better coupler. I link it uh, from Amazon in the description of this video and in my uh, Ender 3 build video. Uh, but if it's already happened to you, you're going to need to clean out the entire hot end assembly. It's not hard. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. But it is something you're going to have to do, otherwise the problem is not going to be resolved. You can pull this Bowden out, replace the coupler, clean the end off, and put it back in. But you're still going to have plastic down in that void that's going to prevent you from shoving this all the way down to the back of the nozzle. You need to get that cleaned out. And that's going to be really easy to do. Um, we're going to walk through step by step. All you're going to do is heat the unit up, remove the nozzle, remove the coupler, and then use your Bowden tube to shove down through the assembly through the bottom. And that's going to shove all that gook out, all that plastic that you don't want in there. You do that a couple times till the Bowden tube comes out clean, and that's it. Then you just reassemble it. So let's get started. This is a perfect example of what a print with uh, under extrusion looks like. Now, under extrusion on Creality printers many times is caused by filament drag. Normally in your hot end, the PTFE tube should go all the way down to the back of the nozzle, but sometimes it separates, creating a gap. This gap fills with molten filament. The filament then chars and cannot be remelted and extruded. So it causes drag both for feeding and retractions. To clean out your hot end, if this occurs, you want to preheat your nozzle. Just go into the control string, uh, go to temperature, and you want this hot. Don't do this like the 180, 190. Put it up to like 210 or so, but you want to get it plenty hot for working on this and getting everything cleared out. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact. 212 is what I did here. Um, next step is once it's preheated, depress the lever on your feeder assembly and withdraw your filament. Take the spool off so you don't accidentally knock it off and set it aside. Next, remove the two bolts that hold your fan shroud in place. Now remember, you're still preheated to 210 or so. The fans are going to be spinning. This is normal. Just set the shroud aside. You're not unwiring anything. Uh, if you have a silicon sock, you're going to want to remove it. If you have the stock insulation, just leave it in place. Uh, but I put silicon socks on all of my machines. Just use needle nose pliers to take that off. Um, be careful, this is very hot. Use the wrench that came with the machine to depress the collar uh, when withdrawing the Bowden tube. It helps push that down. Now, you're going to want to remove the Bowden tube coupler. Just use the wrench again that came with the machine. Unscrew it. Uh, this will be cool at this point on the hot end. The bottom half of the hot end is what gets heated and you don't want to touch. But up here at the coupler, it's plenty fine to use your bare fingers. Just take that off. Um, once that's out of here, you're going to want to uh, remove the nozzle. Now you can use the uh, uh, wrench that came with it. Um, it works fine. I prefer a six millimeter socket wrench. It grips the uh, nozzle firmly and it doesn't strip it out. Now you want to hold the hot end with pliers like I'm doing so you don't put stress on that and break the throat on the uh, heat sink or the, uh, the heat break. Uh, unscrew the nozzle, take that off, and then look at your Bowden tube end. If there's any plastic on it, use some tweezers, clean that off. 
because you're now going to use the Bowden end. And remember, this is still heated to 210 or so. Um, so be careful around that hot end, but you're going to use the Bowden tube to clean out the inside of the heat sink, the heat break, and the hot end. So uh, just take a minute, get all that cleaned out, otherwise you're going to reintroduce it and uh, to the hot end and possibly add to the mess that's in there. But once the Bowden tube is cleaned, use it and shove it all the way through the hot end assembly until it comes out the bottom. This is going to force any uh, molten plastic or you know gunked up plastic that's in there out. Again, use your tweezers, clean it off before you withdraw it. Otherwise, you're just going to drag that back up into the hot end. So get that cleaned off. You're going to repeat this as many times as necessary. Take it all the way out, clean it off again, push it through. Once you're done and it's coming out clean, reinstall your Bowden tube coupler like I'm showing here. Um, get it finger tightened, then use a wrench to tighten it down. Um, if you need to replace the coupler, if you're still running with the stock coupler, this is the time to do it. Put a better one. I'll have a link in the video description. Go ahead and tighten that up. You don't need to hold the heater block with a wrench. I just did that out of habit. So here I'm just finger tightening the nozzle in. And this is key to getting a good seal with the Bowden tube. Once you've tightened it finger tight, unscrew it one full turn. So the nozzle is loose one turn. Now I'm going to reinsert my Bowden tube down until it touches that nozzle that's loose. Once I've done this, then go in and retighten that nozzle the one turn that you had loosened it. That's going to make sure it gets a super tight fit with the Bowden tube. Replace your silicon sock if you have one. And then finally, reattach your fan shroud. Now, at this point, it's still running. I'm still up to 210. You could tell it to cool down, but then you'd have to reheat it uh, for inserting filament again. So I just leave mine heated for the whole process. Um, put those bolts back on. Now, when you're doing this, watch your wiring. Make sure the wiring isn't getting kinked or anything or uh, compressed. You want it where it was when you took this off. Refeed filament through the system and make sure it comes out cleanly through the nozzle. And that's it. That is all it takes uh, to clean out your hot end assembly. Here's something I like doing. I put a zip tie under the collar for the Bowden tube coupler. That keeps it from accidentally being depressed and letting that tube slip. Just put a uh, zip tie on there. Clip off the excess. And that'll keep you from accidentally uh, hitting that coupler and uh, letting the tube get loose. And here's a, we'll do a test print here and make sure it's coming out without any under extrusion. And that looks pretty good. So that'll do it for this episode of Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. Please click that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner and I'll see you next time.